Hello, welcome to another pedal art video. So today we're going to be going through the worst things about the 2011 Lotus Evora S. things about the 2011 Lotus Evora S and these are in no particular order it's that you have to turn the side lights off as well as the main lights when you get out so if you've got the main lights on and you get out to turn your lights off you have to hit the button twice it's a small thing it's just annoying lights on okay the door. There you go. lights on okay one button sides main beam Turn that off. Turn that off as well if you don't. So they're on now. Open the door. You can't always tell that they're on. Two button pressing. So there are buttons on the steering wheel of this Lotus Evora and they are for the cruise control. I like that. I like having cruise control. It's kind of cool. But I would prefer it on an indicator stalk like in a lot of cars. I would infinitely much more prefer on my steering wheel to have buttons for the volume for my stereo. If anybody knows how to adapt that, put it in the comments, tell me about it. That'd be quite a cool thing to do. First world problems, I know, but there you go. Some of the buttons on the dashboard, well, you just can't see them when you're sat driving the car. Well, <clears throat> there's no way to open the boot from inside the car with a button. Now, I believe it was an optional extra, but it's not on this car. You have to do it with the key. The steering judders at low speed when you're on full lock. Now, there's a reason for this. It's called Ackerman steering. And what it basically does is it makes the car handle better when you're going at high speed. The consequence of that is at low speed, when you're on full lock, you get kind of a judder, a skipping from the front wheels. So if you're not used to that, you don't know what it is. When you first look at the car, drive it, test it, you think, oh my goodness, there's something seriously wrong. There isn't, but it is a little bit annoying. But the switch gear, particularly the indicator stalk, is just set a little bit too far away from the steering wheel. So you have to kind of, I don't know, that distance just isn't, isn't just there. You kind of got to put your hand out. It's just a bit too, it's a bit too far away. It's a very small point. Is the seatbelt retraction. So when you unclip your seatbelt and the seatbelt goes back like that, it's supposed to go and retract. On this, it does it but just really, really slowly. So much so that at one point I actually kind of got out of the car and the belt was kind of there and the buckle was on the bodywork and I shut the door and I shut the door on the buckle as it was hanging there on the bodywork. It's not good. It needs to be kind of a quicker retraction. Bit annoying. Small, bit annoying. Designed car, it's fantastically good looking, but it does um, come with its foibles as we're talking about. So, another one is the recesses where the door handles go when it rains or when you wash it, they just kind of collect water. And if you don't kind of wipe it out immediately, and when you it, it just dries funny. So, if it's rained and it, you get water in there and then it dries, you can kind of see where it's been. Also, when you open the boot, if it's been raining or it's had water on it. There's no clever way that that water is dispersing itself down the sides. It just drops into the boot. So whatever you've got in there, it's gonna get wet. More quirkiness of the Lotus, the sun visors. I don't know, they're just too thin. But I get that, I get why they're thin, because probably because they need to be, because you're in quite a low down sports car and you don't want to just completely block your whole view of the road. But they are a bit, wear a cap. Don't bother with the sun visors, put a cap on. That's a better solution to, uh, to the sun visors. The windscreen wiper. You only get one of them. It's 
fucking useless. Windscreen wiper, uh, you get one of them in the Lotus of Aura. I love that fact. I love the windscreen and the shape of it and the wraparound nature of it in this car. Part of um, the great, uh, one of the great things about the kind of overall design of it. Really, really special, quite nice. And I like the single sweeping windscreen wiper. However, I hadn't read this before and before I bought the car. A lot of people say, oh, the windscreen wiper's not very good. Um, I don't think it's to do with the blade. I think it's just the position of the kind of the arm against the windscreen and how it really just doesn't get that much pressure on it. So it works. Um, it's just not the best. It's the gear change. Now, I get it. The gear change in these is notoriously not the best and as they got modified and the linkage was improved later on etc but even with this the later s before the 400 came out with the modified linkage when this car's cold the gear change from first to second is it's not to say it's random but it, it it's just not enjoyable it's it doesn't spoil the car but you kind of get used to it but it is clunky that's not a nice word and not a word I want to use to describe something on a car that looks as good as this. But there you go. It's clunky. It's a small point. They're all small points. But the gear change. Yeah, the gear change. First to second. I mean, the clutch is new in this car. It's not the heaviest compared to some cars. It is a little bit heavy, but yeah, the gear change. Thanks for watching this pedal out video. Please, please, please don't be offended by my take on the worst things about the Lotus Evora because I absolutely love this car. So they are the worst things, but they are infinitely outweighed by all of the other brilliant things, which I'll do in the next video. I'll be very soon. Thanks for watching. Please feel free to like, put something in the comments. Most importantly, subscribe and see us again. Thank you.